Every year, hundreds of big cats are exploited and abused in public. Breeders set up temporary exhibits in malls, parking lots, and their facilities, and then charge the public to interact with the tiger and lion cubs. The people who run these photo ops and pay-to-play schemes often claim that the proceeds go toward conservation in the wild, a blatant lie. Or they claim they must do the exhibiting to provide food for other animals they have. But no person who loves animals can justify abusing one animal to feed another. In many cases, the cub petting fee lines the exhibitor's own pockets. The idea of petting and playing with a tiger cub has an understandable appeal. The cubs are adorable, and the tiger is one of the most powerful and fascinating of all animals. But what the paying public are unaware of is the ugly truth behind these innocent faces. The cubs are torn from their mother shortly after birth, causing emotional pain to the cubs, and especially the mother tiger, whose instinct to nurture her cubs after the long pregnancy continues even after the cubs are snatched away. They're then subjected to months of life on the road. At this age, cubs need extended time to sleep just like human babies. Instead, they're constantly awakened to be played with or to be used as photo props. During the first weeks of life, cubs are especially susceptible to infections. Young felines have immune systems that are not considered competent until at least 16 weeks of age. USDA policy allows contact with cubs between 8 and 12 weeks of age. Yet exhibitors start to use their cubs at a much younger age and use them at far older than 12 weeks so that they can continue to make money. The tiger will not bite me. Do you know why? Because the tiger doesn't have any teeth yet. He's only five weeks old. There simply are not enough officials to monitor the use of cubs. This means that the cubs are stressed, exhausted, and used in these commercial activities, amplifying the possibility of infectious disease transmission between humans and animals often at ages that are illegal. Exhibitors hold squirming cubs under their arms, putting uncomfortable pressure on the young bodies. This also makes it difficult for the cubs to breathe, which is the reason why they do not scream when held this way. Tiger cubs want to explore their environment. This helps develop their bodies and instincts naturally. Instead, they're forced to remain still for photos, the close range flash damaging their sensitive eyes. When they become too restless, exhibitors claim absurdly that the cubs need to be reset, bouncing them up and down repeatedly and blowing in their faces. This is what a mother cat does to discipline her cubs. Many show signs of illness, yet their screams of pain are overlooked because, of course, the show must go on. One exhibitor had 23 tiger cubs die in 2010, blaming the formula for their deaths, yet no other facility reported problems with this formula. And what happens to the cubs that are fortunate enough to make it through this ordeal? They oftentimes end up spending the remainder of their lives in a concrete and chain link fence jail cell, barely larger than the size of a parking space. Changing from asset to liability, the cats are sometimes sold to taxidermists and into the canned hunt industry, where the animal is released into a confined area only to be shot and killed as a trophy. You can read more about this abusive practice by following the link on the screen help by sharing this video so more people can learn the truth behind these displays and refuse to participate in them. Visit our websites bigcatrescue.org and catlaws.com where you can sign up to receive email alerts and send letters to legislators and regulators urging better enforcement. Please help give these animals a voice. Together we can make a difference.